morning. Happy Tuesday. I am currently over in the corner of my room just getting some of the stuff organized for next year. Now, some of this is going to be definitely unnecessary, but I just want to show you what I am doing over here um, to kind of make more space for myself next year and get everything else figured out. So let me show you what we're up to. Okay, so all I'm doing is I got these buckets off of Amazon and they are very similar to the other bucket that I had, except they are slightly more narrow and these ones, more importantly, have a lid. So because this actually really allows me to stack up two, um, I had just taken whatever was here last time and I used these white bins that were very cheap um, and just kind of organized it all. But this year I definitely want to create more space over here. Um, I'm already running out of space for things like tissues. There's not much room under here, so I need to organize this too. But there's not that much room for tissues and um, paper plates and even my math books. We have we use Math and Focus and they have these two huge workbooks. And the second one we don't use till half the year, so I had to kind of store it under here. Um, I also could eventually store it over here when I figured this out too, but this is, this is the very beginning of the organize my classroom with me. So we're kind of seeing how it's going. These are all materials over here. I do want to keep this section, the kind of arts and crafts and consumables in my stand up tall cabinet. I also have some of that, but these are more um, like other supplies and things that I'm going to use. Um, I do also have glue sticks in here. I think I'm going to move them over here just so I can more easily access them. But things like binder clips, index cards, all the expo markers, pencils, I'm still gonna keep most of that in here, I believe. And again, this also needs to be reorganized to figure out how to best kind of access everything. So that is the plan for today. I'm just going to have eight of these bins. So I'm going to fill up what I can and I'm finally gonna throw away, most of this paint is completely, completely gone. So I'm gonna fill up with the small paints in here, get rid of what I need to, and kind of see where that takes us and how much room it opens up. All right, well, 10 minutes later, this is all I have done. You might be asking, why are there plastic knives here? Well, because they were all stacked and they are impossibly hard to get off. So in 10 minutes, I only got two more buckets. So I did the markers and the glue sticks. I'm putting the lids here and I'm giving my hands a break. And I'm just gonna put that aside for now and come back. But yes, it's already going to open up a whole bunch more space. And then for some that are gonna be like taller, Maybe some of those paints that aren't dried out, I'll put in here that don't need a lid. Um, and kind of go through this section and organize. Good morning, happy Thursday. It is a rainy day out there today. Um, and today is also our first grade day to day. Um, if you've been following along this year, you know that we've had three of these. And basically what happens is after we do our universal screeners um, in fall, winter, and in spring, then we all kind of get together, talk about uh, the data and see kind of what trends we're seeing, what we can work on. Obviously this is the end of the year one. So we're just kind of taking an overall look at our growth and then also talking about um, as first grade, we're talking about the kids that will be coming into first grade next year, kind of see what trends they're having um, that we are going to work on. And then also we're going to share that information with second grade so they can kind of pick up where we left off. So I love day to day. I'm one of those weirdos who just loves data in general. So this type of day, while long and very different from being in the classroom, because we're kind of sitting around uh, a table all day and just like discussing things, I thoroughly enjoy it. So um, because of that, I know yesterday I shared a little organization that I will um, take you over and show you what I did. I was finally able to get those bins broken apart. Thank goodness. Actually, I shouldn't say I. One of the IAs that works in my room was a genius and she put it in some soapy water and let it kind of soak for a little and then it just slid right out. All my knives and there, that contraption didn't really uh, work so well. But anyway, I thought this will probably be a shorter video because I just don't really have too much time to film this week with everything going on and with it being a short week. So I wanted to just kind of pop in and share some of the favorite activities that we are doing this week that my kids have really liked, specifically around teaching money and teaching graphing. So let's head over to that. Okay, so first we are looking at reading and analyzing graphs. This is a relatively quick and fast unit for my students because it's usually an easy one for most people. The hardest part is, you know, comparing how many more or how many less uh, 
are in each category. That's always the trickiest part about graphing. So I do think next year for something I'm going to change, uh, and I think I told you this, but I'm gonna make a video of like things I wanna keep and things I wanna change. I want to add uh, a little bit of graphing into my daily calendar just so we are doing this kind of all year long instead of only at the end of the year. And the same goes with telling time. Um, and I'll explain more about that in that video. But so here, this is just from our math and focus book. So I pulled one that we're going to see and we will answer the questions together and I'll explain kind of how we got it. And then we played spin and graph yesterday. Um, and students are actually playing this again today while I am at day to day. And this was such a fun one. Let me show you what this looks like. I'm walking over to grab it now, but the first day, so yesterday was what? Yesterday was Wednesday. Tuesday, when we first introduced this, we did our block or our cube graphs. Um, if I have a picture of it, I'll insert it right here. But basically I gave every pair of students a bag filled with four different color cubes um, and different amounts of each. They had to organize it and represent it like a bar graph. And then they would color it in to match and answer some of those questions. So that was just kind of they already had the data, they weren't collecting any, they were just organizing it and then answering questions about it. Today with spin and graph, they're kind of collecting data um, with each of their spins. So each group's, you know, their data is going to look a little different and then they would represent it in a bar graph and then answer questions. So let me show you. I was cutting up some of them over here. This is from my data and graphing hands-on packet. Um, there's four different ones, so I was just cutting them out and sorting them. And then some of them, A and B have three categories and C and D have four categories. Um, so you can differentiate slightly if you feel like you need to. Um, I'm just gonna randomly pass them out to pairs and they'll have different ones than they did yesterday. So in this category, they have four different animals. Basically, they'll take a spinner. They spin it 10 times. So each person and their partner, they'll spin. Whatever they land on, they will make a tally. And then the next person goes spin, tally, spin, tally. They keep going until they have 10 tally marks here. Once they have spun it 10 times, they will now take the information that they collected and form a bar graph. So we talk about how we need to start here. Um, and then the bar graph that I showed yesterday, the cube one starts from the bottom. So I like that we have both horizontal and vertical bar graphs that they're seeing. And then they have to answer the questions. Did you spin more um, bears or dogs? They'll write down their answer. And then how many more show the equation? So this is where we have been talking a lot about finding the difference between the two categories. So they have to write that here, and then they will compare using the symbols right here. So four different ones here. They had fun with this with a partner yesterday. So they'll do this, and then um, they'll do an independent practice sheet for graphing. Now I said this in my other video, but we are using our reading time to cover some of those math concepts just with all the half days we had this year. Um, we were behind on our math. So that's why we're teaching graphing during our reading time. And during math time, we're still focusing on money, which we're actually going to assess tomorrow. So let me show you what we're doing in money. Of course, we have our math warm up. These are the same I showed you um, for the last couple weeks. We are going to really just focus on this double digit addition and subtraction and some different types of word problems that they have to visualize and see how they would solve. So then we talk about the value of each coin. I've been having students come up, they have to name one of the coins and then write down the value next to it. Each day they have a different set of uh, coins to count. And then these are some of the word problems we've been doing. These are from my hands on money pack. I just kind of take a screenshot of it and I throw the problem up here. I do two of them. So first I have it set up like this so that way we can I can write down the answers and how we solve it over here. Meanwhile, students at their seats have their whiteboards and markers out and they are solving it as necessary. So this one is, I bought three marbles at the store. Each one was a quarter. I handed the cashier $1, how much change did he give me back and what was the one coin he could give me? And then I remove that and we have another one. My sister and I both wanted the teddy bear below, but only one of us could afford it. I had four dimes and my sister had nine nickels. Who could buy the bear? So for this one, I had students draw a line down their whiteboard and I wrote me and sister. And then I drew four dimes, counted it up, wrote the value. And then I wrote, uh, drew nine nickels, counted it up and wrote the value. And then we talked about who uh, could actually buy the bear. Then we played race to a dollar. Now this is a fun one. I'm sure if you've taught money before, you have played this before. It's similar to a free game I have called Pop the Piggy. Um, it's basically the same exact type of game. I will share that free one down in the description. I'll also link this one too, but this was just part of my hands-on money unit that I'd already been printing from. So I printed out this version, but let me show you how this one works. 
So here is the game sheet. I had each student have their own. So what they would do is they each took their own sheet and then they just had one spinner. This way um, I knew they would take turns because they had to you know, spin, collect, add it to their piggy bank or their area here and then pass the spinner. So basically whatever they spin, they would have their play coins with their partner. If they spun a penny, they would add it to the bank and then the next person would go. And essentially each time they are spinning and adding to the bank, they're seeing who can pass a dollar first. My job as I walked around was to continue asking students how many they had in their bank right now or in their workspace so I could actually watch them practice counting those coins, starting with the coin with a higher value and then kind of counting on from there. So that was my job. And then when students, since they were, you know, spread out all around the room, when students felt like they had a winner, they had to raise their hands and I had to come check that person uh, to make sure that they had it correct. So this is a fun one. They're also going to play this today during math too. Oh, also, I'm thinking right now that it is a good time to give you an update on our literacy curriculum committee and how that went. So we did pick our two pilots that we are going to pilot in the fall. And those two pilots are, drum roll please, Into Reading by HMH, which I told you that's kind of, it was very clear that's where we were headed anyway for one of the pilots. And, oh my gosh, I forgot name. Oh. EL Education. Now you might be surprised that we picked EL Education. I told you when we first looked at it, um, I told, if you've been watching my videos and kind of following this process, EL Education, just to make this short, has two different publishers. The presentation we saw first, it was the first one we had ever seen. Um, and the packaging of it all was so overwhelming that it was a hard no from everybody. It was way too many materials. The teacher manual was like this big. It was so dry. It, it took so much sifting through to even fight, figure out what the lessons were. So that was a hard no. Um, throughout the process, our curriculum director explained to us that they have another publisher and the packaging is quite different. So we wanted to make sure we gave that kind of a shot as well. EL Education does use authentic text. So students have books in their hands the whole times for all the lessons, which is really important for our committee. Um, and the new, so that was the last presentation we saw and the packaging was way better. The slides that teachers would use um, and even just the manual and kind of sorting through it all made quite the difference for you know the same materials. So that is going to be one that we are piloting and I like it because it's a like a truer knowledge building curriculum. And then into reading has some great elements. We are definitely using the structured phonics part, which was I think relatively new. So I don't know if you used into reading either last year or the year before. I don't think it had that part. I very much liked the phonics in uh, the into reading. The only kind of questions I really had around it are around the structure of the lessons because it's a more of a reading workshop structure. Now, don't let that scare you. It's not a reading workshop curriculum by any means. It's still a knowledge building one. Um, it's just more of a, the way it's set up which is very similar to what we kind of do now. So it'd be like a whole group lesson, and then we go off and we work with students. They might be doing phonics centers um, and all sorts of stuff like that, as opposed to a truer knowledge building curriculum like EL or CKLA that you might be familiar with, where they would, instead of going off and doing something independently, it's a lot more whole group um, instruction. So it'll be very good to kind of see the differences between the two and see what is a good fit for our district. Now, people had asked in the last video, I had my CKLA visit. Um, I was super impressed by what I saw for the CKLA visit. Getting to look through a knowledge building curriculum, when you look through it and you're coming from the lens of teaching a more workshoppy type of lesson. Um, again, I say that when people hear that, it sounds like horrible. I more just mean where you're doing, just think about the setup, a whole group lesson, and then we all go off and do something, and then we kind of reconvene at the end. So when you're reading through more of the knowledge building lessons, you're like, oh my gosh, so 45 minutes, whole group. I had already heard all the pros and benefits of this, but it was really hard to wrap my head around what it looks like. So getting to actually see it in action, getting to see it with kids, we were lucky enough to go into um, a wonderful neighboring district and they were so kind and we got to see two first grade classrooms We saw, saw their phonics and their knowledge building part. We saw second grade third grade and fourth grade and Every class was so engaged the knowledge that they had around the topics was just remarkable. Honestly um, They knew so much more about different parts of history and different literary things that they were being that they were had taught all, Had been taught all year that I just know my students did not know because of course they weren't taught it 
So I thought it was very cool to see it in person and we were wildly impressed. Um, that being said, there were still a lot of concerns around CKLA that my district had in general or the committee had, so we did not go with that. But I am happy we are going with a knowledge building curriculum so we can kind of compare the two. So that is where we are at and in the fall, I'll be sure to take you along with our pilot. All right, it is later in the day. Um, I don't usually stay after school, but I have a few things I need to do and then I'm going to a doctor's appointment. So we just got a bunch of new decodables. These are actually ones we already have, um, but they're extra copies. These ones are the dandelion readers, but they're extra copies so we can have students like pair up and do some buddy reading um, and make sure that we you know, have all our copies here. Mine, I think I shared this in an earlier video this year, but mine are all, are all stored here. And I have not labeled them yet because I wanted to make sure they were all complete and I still have a few more I need to put in their folders. But these are all with their lessons already ready to go. And then they're separated by currently foundations um, units. So units one through 14, but I don't want to label them as foundations units. I want to label them by skill. So whether it's glued sounds, digraphs, whatever it is. And then if we take one out, let me show you. Why did I pick the heaviest one? There we go. So here we have Zach's bath unit three. I did label these. Um, and actually I got all, um, I have a bunch of black folders that I'm going to use with labels printed out and I'll just have the title of it. And here is the book, Zach's Bath, on this side. And like I said, I know I shared these before, but this is part of my organization that I need to finish. Um, it has the entire lesson here and then all the pages that go with the lesson. Um, if you want to know about the small group reading lesson and how this kind of works and what we use here, um, I'll insert that video boop right here. Uh, and you can go check it out. I'll link it down in the description in case you want to see what we're up to if you want to do it next year. But I am going to actually not gonna organize these right now. I'm going to leave that for a later day. And I'm going to tackle some of this up here. So I think I showed, I'm not sure if I did or not, but let me grab it. Here are these, they're 12 by 12 portfolio cases and they're just a lot thinner um, than those big boys up there. So the school already had these and one of my colleagues already determined that all the books and everything fit into something similar to this. And same with over here, I just want more vertical space. It actually opens up quite a bit because I can stack about, you know, three, maybe four of these on that top shelf instead of only one. Um, Cause some of these, I mean, if I have to use two, I will, but like this one, you can see only what? 25% of the bin is actually being used. So it's quite a waste of space. And then I will just store these big bins in my garage in case uh, the school needs them because they are not mine. They're the school's bins. So I have a few of them. So I'm going to do that for each of those units right now. And then later, I think I shared this in another video. I'm not sure. I ordered, I got a great deal on these. I think they're originally $10 each, but at some point they went on sale and they were only $5 each. So here I'm storing all of my laminated materials for math as well. Um, this one was my place value. My number is 220. So that way everything I used the sticker did not come off, so I need to figure that out. But I'll put a little label here, numbers to 120. I'll put one on the front so I can see it and then kind of stack those so I can grab them as needed. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and tackle that right now. Like I said, this is just gonna be a short little pop-in video. So as always, I do hope you found this video helpful. I know many of you are ending school. Most of you are already done, um, but I hope you enjoy the ride along with me as I prepare for summer. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. See you in the next one. Bye.